my name is Katie Sianci, and I am the host of Courage to Rise show. And today we are just honored to have Marty Ocean Eagle with oh. us. Um, he is oh. a ordained shaman minister, an author, and a breath worker. As oh. and you can share with us a little bit about the breath work. And uh, we're gonna just oh. you know we're gonna talk about your story. Oh. Um, had um, a lot of a history of trauma and substance abuse yeah, and yeah, you've yeah. really you've really res, risen from yeah. a lot of the challenges that you've had in life and now you're giving back yeah. with love yes. and mm -hmm. compassion and your yeah. your energy and yeah. I'm just so excited to share with everyone your story and what you can offer what you're offering to the world to like raise our consciousness and our awareness so. Wow, that is a uh, that's quite the introduction and quite the uh, wide landscape. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah. So to tell my story, we would need a couple of weeks. But um, <clears throat> you know, through um, through life's traumas and neglect and abandonment and abuse, and it was significant in my childhood. Um, you know, from moving all the time. I, I lived in a hundred different houses and apartments by the time I was 30. Um, I went to five elementary schools, three junior highs, three high schools. Um, you know, and it was a constant, uh, just constant turnover in my life. You know, there was no, nothing was constant. I was always on the move. Um, parents were moving away and leaving me uh, with friends or family. Um, so, <clears throat> I had, a, I had an old story I was attached to for a long time, and I used that story as a crutch um, for life's mishaps, you know, or why things weren't going my way, and it was like constantly the victim or constantly, you know, there was so much of my power given to my old story, you know, given out to my dad, my mom, my brother who abused me, you know, um, uh, friends and circumstances, um, things that happened in sports, you know, I was always a victim and I was always full of anger and uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't really know what that was. And, uh, you know, through substance abuse uh, in high school and in college, I went to school on a baseball scholarship uh, somehow. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't because anything I was doing, just because I had some God-given gifts that I wasn't really, you know, that I didn't take those gifts and really push them out into the world the way I should have, you know. But then again, it, it happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen. So um, I live in a world of no regrets and, and I have, I'm grateful for everything that happened in my life. I'm glad no one stopped my suffering uh, so that I could be this today. So, but, you know, I'm, I'm a recovered alcoholic, you know, um, this last November, I just celebrated 20 years of sobriety. Um, Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, to, me, to, to me, because um, I had three DUIs, I had four total cars by the time I was 25. Mm -hmm. And um, I never could figure out why, why nothing was sticking. Marriages, uh, relationships with people, um, nothing was ever sticking. And um, it was like I kept doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And um, moving away from situations, trying to do a geographic and changing my location. But the problem with that was, is I was taking me with me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was, I was taking the unhealed uh, me with me. And that's all, that was always a recipe for disaster. So um, I don't know which, where you want me to go with this right now, but um, yeah. over, the last, over the last 20 years, um, you know, it's been, um, if you know anything about alchemy, uh, it's like um, it's like I've, alchemy's been working me. Um, I've been studying the, the Emerald Tablets and um, um, alchemy for personal transformation. And what I realized as I started reading the steps of alchemy was that alchemy was working on me before I even thought about working it in my life. It's a calcination. It's a disillusion. So basically, you have to give up everything. You know, you have to give up all attachments to things, material all attachments to people because um, alchemists when they were trying to make gold out of metals and purify it mm -hmm. they also had a separate place where they meditated and because they believed that they had to purify themselves so in order for the process to work on the chemical side they believed they had to be purified on the inside 
So that is kind of what's been going on with me um, as I've gone down this path. And in the last seven months has just been all the work that I've done for years. And I've, I did 15 years of talk therapy around my childhood issues. Um, but then when I got into doing some really deep work with a couple of what I call my spirit mothers here in Sacramento, that's when the, the changes really started to happen. And that's when my uh, bad choices, let's call them, I call them heavy choices because they weigh you down. So no bad, no good. They're just light and, he light and heavy for me. You know, that's the way they believe in Peru uh, in the Andean, the Andean tradition. So for me to get rid of that heaviness meant that um, I had to go back and identify every wound. I didn't just say, oh, I was wounded. I went back and gave a name to every wound, whether it was not just my father, it was everything that my father did. Not just my mother, it was every decision that she made that harmed me or altered my, my course as a, as a child and as a teenager. It was identifying every wound that my brother did to me. It was identifying the wounds that I did to myself. So what we have is this, all these cords of power, because we're born with all of our power as a baby, I think. That's the way I think of it. And then we just start piecing off pieces of our power to all of our wounds. And until we've identified the wound and then cut that cord individually with each wound until we have all of our power back in, well, we're a slave to our, to our story. You know, we're, we're, we're attached to it. Um, it's the cause of all my poor decision-making. It's why I couldn't, you know, I was always picking women. And I, what I realized what I was picking my mates from an unhealed heart. And I just now at age 50, am starting to feel the deeper parts of my heart and understand that I really never loved anybody uh, the way I, we were meant to love people. And, you know, so, so as that expansion happens and I look in the mirror and I love the person that I see, I just wrote that down. I wrote notes all day today. My, my it's been going like crazy. But until I can look at the man in the mirror and love that person, and then I'm that person out in public, then I'm, I'm not authentic. So for me, it's all about my truth. And it's all about authenticity. And it's all about walking in life without making excuses for who I am and setting proper, proper boundaries with people, um, places, things. I, I need to, if I don't have proper boundaries, then I'm just out with my Superman cape on trying to save people. Uh, they don't ask to be saved or don't want to be saved. I really don't have the power to save anybody these days. And I, I have a lot of people reaching out to me through Facebook um, looking for answers. And I don't have anybody's answers. Uh, all I have is my story, my experience, my strength, and my hope. And people have to, uh, people have to be willing to go. You know, you're, you're, I love the name Courage to Rise, you know, for your show. But I, I will also say it's, it's the courage to descend. Because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every... Every time that I descended and worked on something, I got to a new level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So every time I went deeper, I went higher, deeper, higher, deeper, higher. So for me, those of us that are willing to go to the darkest depths are the ones that can raise to the highest heights. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way, the way I view it. So to me, those that have been traumatized and abused the most um, are the ones that can really um, do their work and have the opportunity to ascend higher. So, yeah, I want to touch on, thank you so much for sharing yeah, on that. Uh, yeah. And I want to touch back on the attachment yes. because yes. I hear that a lot, especially with my clients. I hear that mm -hmm. a lot about, well, I'm attached to these people. Yeah. Or how can I not attach to somebody? How can I not attach to my house and yeah. the things that I, I feel that I need or I think that I need, but it's yeah. really attachment to a person, whether it be a partner mm -hmm. or a family right. member. And so can you touch on that about how you release those attachments and why it's so important? Yeah. Why it's so helpful. Yeah. To it, but still be connected. Well, we, we, can, we can get uh, unhealthily attached to anything. We can get attached to suffering. We can get attached to our story. You know, it's like the, the book that kind of chipped, turned things around for me on attachment was Don Miguel Ruiz Jr.'s uh, The Five Levels of Attachment. Um, that book made me look up the definition of attachment versus connection. And attachment means I'm making a person, place, or thing an actual part of me, an extension of me. 
so that when that thing or that person, the car, the house, whatever, when that goes away, I'm devastated because I feel like I lost a piece of me. No one gets a piece of me anymore. I'm a whole person all by myself. My kids don't have a part of me. You know, those old sappy code, codependent love songs, you know, <laughs> I lost the biggest part of me when I lost you. It's like, bleh. it's like all bullshit, you know, it's like, True. it's like, so now I can, now, now it's about connection. Mm-hmm. Now it's about learning the difference between unhealthily attaching to you or letting you in and connecting with you, but still be whole and happy behind that connection, you know? So I have so many beautiful people in my life, but if they go away, I'm not lost. You know, I'm not wrecked. So the, the, the programming that we have is that, you know, we have to make ourselves whole and fix ourselves with things on the external, the car, the house, the, and I don't have any um, unhealthy attachments to family members just because they're blood members of mine. If the bomb goes off today and we're all getting ready to be vaporized, the only thing I get to take with me is my soul, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you're as much my sister as a blood sister to me. We're all connected. We all breathe the same air. We all come from the same earth. We all come from the same cosmic stardust. I think we've all got the same DNA in us. We just each have our own specific purpose and essence here in this existence. And it's a job to find out what that is. That's the journey for me. It's like, what am I really here to do? I'm not here to go buy the best car, that you know, the car I've always dreamed of. I'm not here to go buy the bigger house. You know, I've had that stuff. You know, I've had the cars, I've had the houses. And none of that made me happy. And, but some people that is their happiness and it's not a judgment because some people need to live that life and, and that's okay. I'm just really, for me, I can't have any attachments to anything. I set proper boundaries with family members that do not belong in my life. Um, I don't feel like I owe them anything. I don't feel like anybody owes me anything. And so I, I, I just think being attached to things is, it's a, it's a crutch. You know, it's, it's a programming, it's a conditioning that we have to have all this stuff. I just spent two weeks at Teo, at Teotihuacan, Mexico with uh, 40 people from 15 countries. Most of them were like nomadic. They're, they're beautiful. They don't have possessions. And they're, they're living out of backpacks and they're incredible human beings with no attachments. They just, they don't have any. They don't have to have the stuff at home goods, you know. They don't have to go shopping all the time. and they don't have to fill their house, you know, where every corner's got shit in it, you know? Sorry, I just I use this shit word. So, um, use the shit word, that's fine. <laughs> all right, shit, fuck, damn. Okay, we got those out of the other way. Okay, so yeah. anyway, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> anyway, so when we attach to things, then I think we set ourselves up to be, you know, to be let down and hurt when, when those things, when it's like your favorite vase sitting on a, on, a, on a table and your kid knocks it off and breaks it. And you get just devastated, right? Yeah. Who gives? Why? Yeah. It's like we're attached to a vase, or it's like you know. I don't get me wrong. I love my children, and and I don't want them to hurt or suffer. But I'm also going to allow them to suffer if they choose to suffer. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to feel like I got to you know be so attached to them that I got to go save them from everything. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Can we talk a little bit about that because mm-hmm. part of it's like that that feeling of Mm. Well, there's a there's a desperation that comes from a parent who is seeing mm. a child that's suffering, or yeah. you know, there's this idea of well, if I suffer or I let somebody mm. else suffer, that mm. something that I'm not doing enough or something bad's going to happen, and yet there's there's a power in surrendering to surrendering mm. to <clears throat> the that you're in, whether it's a you know it's good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. There's a surrendering in that that actually <clears throat> relieves the suffering, but yeah. we're so we so are so afraid of suffering as if it's a bad thing. Well, fear is a horrible thing, right? To live in fear of the unknown is just locks you up in anxiety, you know. And it's like I, I had so much fear and anxiety for a long time, you know, and um, I, I no longer am afraid, you know, if my child catches it, gets a disease or is suffering, I'm going to have, I'm going to feel terrible and I'm going to love them. Right. But I'm not going to get attached to the suffering. You know, I, I need to be strong and healthy and happy behind it still. Um, and I know that's hard for people to understand. It's like, how can you be happy when your child's suffering? Well, 
you know, my child's journey is my child's journey. And I'm there to help and support and love that child as much as I possibly can. But when we go, when we try to, most people that are trying to save other people haven't saved themselves yet. So they don't even know how. So they're out there trying to fix everybody else when they haven't looked at the man or the woman in the mirror and done the work that they need to do in order to be healthy and healed themselves so they can show up in a healthy way for the child that's suffering or the family member that's suffering. Because how many times, um, I remember when my dad was dying and he was in the hospital and it was a shit show between my stepmother who was bipolar and my aunt and uncles who were addictive codependents. And it was this massive argument. My dad's dying in the hospital, right? And none of them had done their inner work. It was just a nightmare. You know, they didn't know what to do with their feelings. They were acting out and lashing out and yelling at each other. And, and it was just a mess because they just didn't know how to be present and just put their hearts into the situation and see how they could support and love my father during the time when he's dying. And they made it all about them. It was all about their wounds. It was all about their suffering. It was nothing about what he was going through. And it ended up, my stepmother wasn't even in the room when I held his hand and he took his last breath, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was sad, but it, you know what? It was exactly the way it was supposed to be. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to my stepmother since that day, actually. And they were married for 30 years. So that's just life. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, for me, it's like, um, it all comes back to me. Everything comes back to me. Everything, all my suffering, all the decisions I made in life, everything I went through, it all comes back to me. It's like, what's my part? You know, and my part might have been as a soul that I picked these people and brought them in when before I came here. But um, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that they're suffering, and I'm glad that nobody changed my suffering. Because if, if I try to change other people's suffering, I'm playing God. You know, I, I'm I'm playing God. It's like. Maybe next, maybe next incarnation, I'm going to come back as a starving kid in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in Haiti or Africa or something. Maybe that's my job to do on a soul level the next time. But I don't kid myself to think that I can solve the world's problems. You know, the best thing I can do for the whole world is to change me. Um, and I think just by changing my consciousness and my vibration, I'm already changing other people just by doing that. I think if, if 7.5 billion people went and did their inner work, we wouldn't be talking right now. Yeah, everything, you know, it'd be rainbows and butterflies flying out of our asses every day. <laughs> you know, it'd be awesome. Yeah, so true. No, no wars, no, um, I mean, no violence. I mean, it would just be all yeah. love and yeah. joy. And also just embracing what is. Yes. <laughs> living in the nut living in the nut living in the nothingness. Yeah. I don't have a plan for next year. I don't I don't have anything planned. I don't I, I live in the nothingness. You know, my sticky notes on my refrigerator say, I know nothing and I'm being prepared. And I know nothing means I'm, I'm going back to childlike quality where I didn't, you know, know anything. I'm relearning everything. It's like on my own, I started driving my car with my off hand. Um, I started drinking with my off hand. I started eating my food with my off hand. Um, I went out into the country and I drove a long stretch of road on the opposite side of the road. Safe. I made sure it was safe. <laughs> And I drove on the opposite side of the road for a long time. On the trails behind my house, I now run on the left side instead of the right side. I'm really trying to unwire you know, everything I thought I knew because everything's being disproven, much like stuff in science. I mean, it's always everything they spouted out as gospel for all these years and how old, how old the pyramids are and all that stuff. It's, nobody knows. It's like it's, it all gets disproven and it all comes back around on the spiral path, you know. So yeah. Mm -hmm. well, can you can you share a little bit about that about how mm -hmm. you're driving? I mean, I can say from a, a scientific perspective mm -hmm. you know, how our brains are wired in a certain way, and we have these neural yeah. pathways in our brain. Yeah. But when yeah. we're used to doing something a certain way, yes, we're going to continue to do it. just just like when you go hiking. You know, there's a path, yeah. it's the same path, right. and you just go on the same path. But then when you create a new path, in order for it to become a path. You have to try something different and do something different over and over and over again. Yeah. So can yeah. you share how that how that helps to to shift or make changes? Like if somebody wants to make changes in their life, mm -hmm. what's one thing that they can do to start making those? <laughs> My favorite saying is, if you really want to change, there's one thing you have to change, and that's everything. Everything. Um, yeah. So for me, it's like literally 
the surrender you're talking about and acceptance. Um, so for me, um, I get a daily reprieve based on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. And that means spiritually surrendering and accepting um, who I'm supposed to be in my truth every day. And so for me, when I, when I start taking different paths or when I start, you have to have the courage and the strength to do that because <clears throat> when this calling came from me, and you know a little bit about that, you know, about seven months ago, I got blown open. Um, but I, I, I changed everything. I, I um, hang on a sec. And I declined. so I changed everything. I, I went home and asked for a divorce from a marriage I shouldn't have been in. Um, that created all kinds of fear and anxiety for me. Um, I sold whatever properties I had. I cashed in and liquidated any retirement accounts. So everything I have, I, I, I would rather die an old broke man and have lived a badass life helping people find their truth than to sit here and do the program thing where we try to put as much money away for retirement. And then we, you know, my stepbrother, who's my age, 50 years old, uh, when I was in Mexico a week and a half ago, uh, I got the call that he had heart trouble. And um, two days later, he, they found, or a day later, they found out he had 90 to 98% blockages in all of his arteries at age 50. Mm -hmm. Opened him up, four-way bypass, and, he's, and he's, I just got the call from my mom today. He's struggling. He's got AFib going on. It's like, he's a school superintendent, been working his ass off for years, beautiful human being, and he may not live to, you know, C70. You know, it's like, so why, why are we not doing everything we can to walk in our truth and, and live this today? You know, so for me, it's like, you really have to surrender and really want to change things. Um, you, you've got to go all in. For me, I had to cash all my chips in. You know, it's like my kids are like, I've been in like, I don't know, 12, you know, 10 states, three countries, um, you know, 20 cities in the last seven months. You know, I've been. Oh, you've been traveling. <laughs> <laughs> well the calling's coming and it's like the more you open to it the more the the more the universe makes it happen you know it's like i could tell you and you know some of them but i could tell you story after story after story i could tell you stuff that happens every day with me right now and it's nothing that i'm doing other than surrendering and living in the nothingness and not having a plan and people are going like well how do you not have a plan it's like i just don't have a plan i don't know what tomorrow's going to bring i'm not it's not guaranteed for me so i'm going to live today with as much love as I can. And I, I, I just want to help give people hope and courage to really look inside for their answers because it's not outside and everybody wants the quick fix. Everybody wants to go, go with 1600 people to a Joe Dispenza, you know, work, uh, workshop. And if and I hear his voice all the time, nothing against Joe Dispenza, but um, I'm not a quantum physics guy. You know, I don't need to know how the wheel rolls. I just need to know the damn thing rolls and let's yeah. go. You know, I, I don't. I'm not going to get into neuro pathways and, and, and all that. That's just not the a mind is a PhD in life. You know, I have the experience behind it. You guys know why it all does what it does. Yeah. I know how it affects us. Right. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I know how I got out of it. But I don't know how everybody else, what everybody else's journey is, is 7.5 billion people. I do not have a pen that writes any of their stories. I only write my stories. So. Yeah. Um, I can tell everybody what I did. I can give you all the books that I read and you can go do everything I did, but you're probably not going to get the same result because you're not me. Yeah. So, so I, I, but I do think it's about, it's about surrender. You know, you really have to start unwiring all that old programming, all the linear way of thinking, all the circular way of thinking, and really look at it as a spiral path going up into infinity. And every time we make another rotation, we get to a higher level of consciousness. If not, we stay stuck and we, I picked her again. Damn, I picked her again. Damn, I picked her again. It's like, now that I'm on the spiral path going up, <clears throat> my choices that don't serve me are fewer and farther between. And I make better ones. And I learn. And it's like, just because she's very attractive and she's amazing doesn't mean I need to go try to have a relationship with her. You know, it, it doesn't, or, or whoever, you know, because that was the old way of trying to love from an unhealed place, right? Mm -hmm. I needed that validation, you know. I was the unseen child growing up, you know. Nobody paid attention to me. Nobody gave me love. They moved and left me and abused me, you know, over and over and over. And all I was doing was screaming out, look at me, 
Mm-hmm. Will somebody please look at me? And so that's the way I lived my life in my 20s and 30s and even 40s. You know, it's like, I need that validation. You know, can somebody please pay attention to me? So then I put on the show, you know, on the external so people will look at me and pay attention to me and validate me. And uh, today I'm valid, just right here by myself. I don't need you to validate me. You're really pretty, but I don't need you to look at me to tell me I'm valid, so. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and yes. that is so powerful. I mean, the freedom that you experience mm. when you're able to say, yeah. I, I, I'm valid. I'm valid. I mean something, I'm, I have meaning, yeah. I have I purpose. And yeah. if you don't like me, if you don't approve of me, that's okay. Because There's 7.5 billion other people. Go, go like them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yes. you know, and that's really getting you back to your true nature. Because I think of children, like you talked about, you know, kind of getting back to your childlike yeah. energy. Yes, yes. They, don't, they, they go around, they just love, they just, they're open to yeah. everyone. And they see yes. everything as a possibility. They see everything as it's fresh and it's new. And yeah. They don't necessarily need someone to validate nope. them until nope. they're like maybe nine, 10, 11, you know, that's when then they're starting to get approval from their peers. But prior right. to eight, it's just everything is just open. Well, and why we got to go back and even look at why, why are they starting to get approval or needing approval from their peers? It's yeah. because of the, the programming from parents the stuff they see on television the stuff they watch on social media. Everything is there to hook you on how you look, you know, and how you present yourself and, you know, go, going on further into teen, teenage years, you know, what sex is about and what it's really for, you know, and it's, everything's so screwed up. You know, I have no social media other than my Facebook, you know, and I had never, you know, I don't have any cable. I don't watch the news. I find out about, as you know, school shootings, like days after they happen, you know, it's like, because I can't do anything about that stuff. You know, um, what I, I think I make a bigger difference by walking in my truth and authenticity and those people that are in my field become attracted to that. And then hopefully I can help them get started on their path. I don't, I can't tell them what that path is, but we, I can help them you know, get started on their path. And then that's what this is all about for me. It's just about people letting go of that childhood programming. So we, you know, part of it also is um, as I'm doing shamanic breath work and, and training in that, um, a soul retrieval, you know, because the stuff that I saw as a kid, as a child, um, there's a piece of me that had to detach and go away for a long time. You know, I couldn't, you can't handle that kind of stuff. You just can't, there was no therapy. There was no anything that went on around this stuff. You just, you're just left with it as a seven-year-old kid, you know, and a, a 10-year-old kid and 11, you can't handle that kind of stuff. So it's been a journey to learn how to play again, you know, just, just to be that childlike quality. And, and I've, I've brought him back, you know, it's like, seven-year-old, 10-year-old, but he's back, you know, and he's so much damn fun, you know, I'm having so much fun with him, you know, it's like, we're traveling around the world, we're meeting all kinds of amazing people, and, and I'm not afraid anymore, I have no fear, I, I have no fear of traveling by myself, I love being alone now, and that was not who I used to be, uh, I used to feel abandoned or lonely when I was in my house by myself after separation or divorce, you ended up my kids, the walls would just crawl in on me, you know, it was just like the anxiety and the fear would just be overwhelming. And now it's like, you know, I love sitting by myself and reading a book and I love being alone because I'm not, I'm never alone anymore. I, I always feel like I've got the creator with me and I can always call on him or her whenever I want to, <clears throat> to ask a question or to get, you know, and everything these days is not from here to here. It's from here to here. Mm. This tells this how to act instead of this telling this how to feel Mm -hmm. so everything's heart-centered everything's right below my heart my inca seed or my divine light because i've seen it you know and it's beautiful and it's like now i feel everything this is my classroom i don't have any gurus i don't have any teachers i don't have any mentors i have people who give me information but it's up to me to bring it through this crap and get it into my classroom and let this teach me and then once this feels right then I can talk about it and then I can share it. Because if I'm sharing from here with stuff I've read in a book or a workshop I went to, I'm just sharing somebody else's perception, somebody else's ideas. It's like, they're not mine, they're not authentic. So I don't go around trying to change people's perception because it's none of my business. And uh, when people read my post and try to 
reply back, you know, explaining why what I posted isn't correct. You know, <laughs> it's like, well, my truth is my truth. You don't get to tell me what my truth is. My truth might change, but it's only going to change based on my experience, not on what you tell me, you know? So I don't go around telling people my truth is more important and better than their truth. I try to meet people um, exactly where they are at in life and not judge um, their path, you know? To me, it's like even saying someone is suffering is a judgment. It's like where they're at is where they're at. And until they get enough um, willingness to go to any length to get out of what they're in, then they're going to they're gonna stay where they are. And they're just in a circle, you know, it's just a, just a loop. I like being in the oval spiral path. You know, I like ascending up, you know. Sometimes we got to go down to get back higher. And it's like, that, that's okay. You know, like Linda Starwolf says, you know, light, dark, no difference. I live in the middle, you know, and I journey between the dark and the light. You know, I'm a light and dark journeyer. So um, just because I've done what I feel like is uh, most of my inner child work, which I've done, I think I've, that's one reason I'm, I am the way I am, because I don't have any pain attached to my story anymore. I, I don't have any. I can share it openly. I can tell you about what my dad did and my mother. I can tell you about what my mother did and my dad did later on in life. I, I, just, I share it because I know others went through stuff like that and they can relate. Uh, just like in Alcoholics Anonymous, same thing. You know, if you go in there and you stay long enough, you're going to hear somebody tell your story. And that connection gets people to stay and potentially do the work they need to do. But they still have to do the work, just like the 12 steps. It's just like out in life. You have to do the work. And people want shortcuts. They want to take ayahuasca or they want to do San Pedro and they want to take these shortcuts. And it's like, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are doing plant medicine just because it's the thing to do. It's like, well, that's a really bad fucking idea. <laughs> it's like that's not a good idea just because it's cool you know to do it it's like that stuff can really mess you up i've seen i've heard story after story of people dying from that stuff and uh if you're not with somebody that knows what they're doing on that stuff you can really mess you up and uh for me as a sober person you know i get everything i need through breath work <clears throat> through the super oxygenating of the brain and through inner journeys um inner healings um ancient wisdom comes through that way uh, I don't think I need outside influences other than my own breath. So mm -hmm. I thought, I think life force energy, our <clears throat> breath is our life force energy. Well, that's, we, I, mean, I think the creator gave us everything we needed within. Yeah. But, but then society happens. We're born, right? We're this beautiful little ball of light that everybody's yeah. coo cooing over. And then what do we do? We destroy that ball of light. You know, we just started telling it what to do and you got to do this way. And you, you can't go here and you can't do that and don't do that. And then all of a sudden, the light just, you know, gets, gets, you know, crushed. And so I think it's a journey to go back to childhood and find your light and, and then live from that place. You know, that's, that's what I think. So for me, anyway. Yeah. So are you, uh, mm -hmm. are you, now that you are, I mean, you're on this journey, you're doing your own thing, you're helping people. Oh my God. Are you also <clears throat> now mm -hmm. offering some sort of coaching? Do you provide mentorship, coaching? What do you, what kind uh, of you know, everybody, every, everybody's asking me, what is this for you? What are you going to do? And I'm like, um, well, I've, I've authored a, a chapter in a book. And then I'm, uh, as soon as I got back from Mexico this week, um, uh, the voice inside my creator told me that Marty, I've already given you the book. You have it. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was in my, all these, I pulled my car over like five times on the way to the gym to make notes. I'm, I, I text them to myself. And I said, oh, my God, my book's in my text and my book is in everything I've been posting on Facebook the last six months. Mm -hmm. Within a day and a half, uh, I have everything in a Google Doc that's basically the bulk of the text of my book. And so Amazing. it's crazy. I just got to, like, organize it and, and add to some stuff that I need on some of the just, like, bullet point text I sent to my stuff. But I've got it. It's all there. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know exactly what it's going to be called. I've got about five different titles. Um, so I'm in the middle of, of doing that. And in the meantime, um, I keep getting asked. I've been asked by somebody that's uh, published 11 books and takes people on journeys all over the world to join their team. Um, I don't think that my journey is to join someone else's dream. Um, I think it's I need to keep my autonomy. Um, I will um, I will offer uh, 
uh, free for someone on this um, show, um, I'll give you a free one hour uh, mentorship and we can talk about whatever you want, um, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're, uh, you need help with. But please keep in mind that uh, I'm not here to listen to somebody, you know, crying their damn milk. You know, I, I'm, I'm not here to listen to a pity party. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a realist and I can see things. I've got very clear vision and I can, I can see the wounds. Um, I, I can see when somebody's hurting, struggling. Um, and I get, I try to drill into it pretty quick. And some people don't like what I say, you know, they, they're not ready and, and that's okay. It's not a personal thing, but, but uh, anybody that you can, you know, offer a, a one hour free mentorship that wants to, that resonates with me, that feels like they can get something from talking with me, I'd be happy to offer that. As far as uh, things I'm going to do later, uh, I'm a work in progress and uh, I don't know yet, but it's coming and I don't know what that is. <laughs> I love it. But it's, it I've got people. I got people from all over the world right now. I've got uh, so many trips. I got an offer to go to Mallorca, Spain, right now, uh, which I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to. I just got asked last night to go to a workshop and present my gifts uh, in Hawaii. Um, I've got the gathering of the shamans coming up in May. Before that, I've got an invitation to volunteer at I think it's called Bali Fest in Bali. And oh, yes. in, Peru, in Peru, I'm, um, I'm going to be one of 144 Caro Pacos because I'm, I'm technically a fourth level Caro Indian Paco in Peru. Um, I've done all the rights initiation and training for that. Um, but I've been asked to be a part of a special group uh, back in September. To uh, these, They've been training Caro Pacos for 40 years around the world. And I've been asked to be one of the 144 to come try to trigger the next Caro Indian prophecy. Um, and that's going to be an 11 or 12 day trip around Peru and a trip up in the mountains in Oyuriti, um, which is a two, two day pilgrimage. Um, and then I'm going to Egypt in November. <laughs> so in between all of that, I don't know. I'm raising my kids. They're 14 and 16. And uh, I'm, uh, I've got a very supportive ex-wife, the mother, my, the mother of my kids, and we work things out. So I'm available for all kinds of things. So and I'm open to you know, clearing my schedule for what comes my way. So, and I've got great contacts in Peru. Um, I've been asked to uh, um, come on board and do a workshop on breath work um, uh, down there in Peru at Daniel Gutierrez's place, at a place called Catalina outside of PSAC. So uh, anyway, lots of stuff going on. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone will be able to have your contact information. So I'll share. Yeah. And then you also have Facebook. You have a Facebook group. You have a Facebook I do. group. Yeah, higher, higher, it's a private group. Uh, it's called Higher Vibrational Beings. And uh, <clears throat> I haven't even invited everybody on my friends list yet. It's got about six, 700 people. I just opened it. Um, it'll, it'll go to a few thousand uh, once I take the time to click everybody to invite everybody on my friend list. Um, I, I am picky about who comes in on Facebook, um, all 2,000 or so people. And I didn't have social media before, went, before May. So everything I've done, all 2,000 people that are on my uh, Facebook friends list. I've actually looked at each one of their profiles, and I've made sure that they're on some on the spiritual path somehow. I don't have outside friends, and I don't have family members on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's only people that are on the path. Uh, they're trying to raise their level of consciousness. That feel like they might be ready to do some deep diving um, into the things that are holding them back from being them. You know, you are the you you seek. You know, yeah. it's not me. It's, yeah. You are the you that you seek. So true. You, you are the you that you seek. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for all of the. I love you so much. I'm so great. I'm so. I'm so grateful. I'm yeah. so grateful that we our paths crossed and that we were able to to meet in person mm. and mm -hmm. also share yeah. in this yeah. collaboration and move mm. move you know raise the <clears throat> consciousness of this planet. And yeah and share love with each other, which is yeah. what a blessing. Yes. Yeah. It's the strongest, uh, it's the strongest life force Shakti energy in the world. It's love. And uh, once people can get out of the way and, <clears throat> but it really starts with self love. If, if you don't love yourself, then you're giving away fake love is my perception. If you can't look in the mirror and look into your eyes until you see your soul and, and then you smile and love what you see, you got work to do. 
you know, that's my perception. And if you don't like it, there's 7.5 billion others. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. You, you well, really, you need true for you. True for me. True for we'll me. See. Yeah. True yeah. for you. True for me. Yes, yeah. and everyone gets to decide what their truth is, which Absolute. is they get to have their power, that power to choose. Yeah, but they've got to go pull, all, to me, it's like my, they got to pull all that power back in. And it's, it's that childlike power. We, we had, we're so powerful as children, you know, as babies. We're, we're ultimately powerful then. And then it's a, to me, it's about, you know, going back and pulling all the power and cutting all those cords with all those stories. You know? I have one more question. Go. I'll ask you before we end. So if your future self, mm -hmm. your future self were to look back and give advice mm. to your current self, your present mm. self, what do you, mm. what do you imagine that might be? Um, you know what? I'm so grateful for everything that happened in my life because I get to be this. So I wouldn't want to change anything. You know, it's like um, the only, because I had to do everything I had to do to be this mm -hmm. and I, I think um, we really need to give ourselves a break. We really need to give ourselves some love and some compassion. Be more loving and more compassionate to yourself. Um, because we, we do, people walk around with the, you know, 8,000 pound elephant on their shoulders of shame, you know, and because we did things that the world says is bad, you know, um, we carry that around and, we, we realize after 20, 30 years, all we've ever seen is the top of our shoes because we're just so weighted down in shame. And shame tells us we're a bad person because we've done bad things. And that's just not, it's, it's the most unhealthy thing you can, you can have. So I, I think if you can get out of shame and forgive yourself and have self-love and self-compassion, um, that, that's a good start, you know, uh, because you can't, if you don't have that, then you can't give it away to anybody else. You know, we can't give away what we don't have. So it really is a selfish journey for a while. You really got to be really selfish. And um, all the things you think imp are important really aren't. You know, it's just all program stuff. So anyway. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're for welcome. Time. Your wisdom. Mm -hmm. I love you. <laughs> wisdom. Yes, I'm not knowledgeable. It's wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and that's part of being really living life, being in life. It's the experience. Yeah. You know, I don't talk about anything I don't have experience with. So it's, it's not that I've read in a book. It's all my personal experience. So anyway. Well, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Can't wait to see you again soon. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye.